So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is March the 25th, 2021. The topic for this evening is you are all that is. So for this whole year, the, um, the theme for this whole year is disclosure. What I mean by that is, it's not that, you know, it's, it's, it's just that, you know, whole year, this whole year, um, a lot of things are going to be revealed to us. So that's really the energy is, is re- a lot of things is going to be revealed to us, things that have been happening um, behind the scene is now going to come um, to, to us to going to be known to us very easily. I mean, not that, you know, it's, they're not going to announce anything um, on the news, not necessarily. However, if we want to find out what actually is happening, it's, it's actually quite easy. We can, we can search um, alternative media. A lot of places would be able to tell us a lot about what really is happening. <clears throat> so, and the, the, the theme for this, for the podcast this month is unboxing. So this is the, the last, um, the last episode for this month. And I really want to kind of wrap things up. Um, I've been talking about things that I've been really exploring and learning for because I'm interested in them. So, and, and some of them are really have opened my eyes and, and also shifted my perspective a lot. And, um, and I would talk more about that later on, but for now, I just want to mention that like, because of the, the theme for this year, so many things are going to be presented to us. Um, sometimes they would be presented to us in um, a lot of it would be on mainstream media and then some of it would be on alternative media. So lots of things are going to be presented to us. So how do we mix, how do we pick out which ones are, are the, the true things, which one are the real things versus the ones that are more um, propaganda and trying to persuade us one way or another. For example, first we were told that, well, there is a deadly virus. We must all isolate ourselves in order to curb the transmission of this you know, deadly disease. It's, it's like almost like the plague, in the bubonic plague um, hundreds of years ago. And, and we have to wear a mask, we have to isolate. And well, the mask that we have, we are supposed to wear really can't protect us. They told us that they, they really can't protect us, but wear it anyways, because, you know, why not? And then um, we have this test, this test that um, would may or may not be able to tell us whether we have been infected with this deadly illness, but you know, we should take it anyways, because why not? The authorities are telling us to do it. And then we have a vaccine now, which may or may not protect us from the virus, but we should take it anyways, just in case. It's like this, this information machine is running in overdrive capacity. And you really have to ask yourself this question, what on earth really is going on? And um, this is a good question to ask. And, and I just want to you know, put it out there is, is that um, the, I'm not gonna tell you what I think is going on. Uh, I have my own, um, own take on what is going on, but I'm not gonna tell you that, not because, I have any qualms about telling you that, but because if I tell you, then I'm, I'm just another source of that information to try to persuade you to, you know, think like me or trying to be the authority, which I really have very little interest to do. 
I I would share, but um, like it's it is really not my intention to persuade you one way or another. So instead of so that's why instead of telling you what my take is, I actually I'm going to share with you um, what really helped me in my journey of figuring out what is true for myself and what's not true. So kind of what has helped me out on my own journey. So first thing that I would really like to share with you that really helped myself is that I come to this realization. First of all, the first thing is that I come to this realization that there is no truth outside of me. There's no truth outside of me and there's no truth outside of you and no truth outside of each and every one of us. We, we, are, the, we are the only one who can decipher for ourselves what is true for, for ourselves in each moment. It's no one else can do that for us. And if we, if we try to um, give uh, to let someone else tell us what is going on, then we are um, we are really giving our power away, and we are simply um, consenting to pull the wool over our own eyes. That's so. The, the, that's really one of the the major or first thing that I really, I I think really helped me on my own journey is to get to the point where I. Um, I'm comfortable to rely on myself and not take someone else's information on face value, no matter how much authority they seem to have over the, on, on a certain subject. It does not matter how, how many years they have studied. It does not matter how high their position may be in the society that matters nothing it may, means absolutely nothing you are the only one that can choose for yourself what is the truth for you in each moment so that's this one concept this one idea is what helped me and so I want to share with you and whether that that goes that's something that you resonate with you or not that's um not for me to not for me to push it on you i'm just saying that that helped me that really helped me and and i think of course the 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 the, the corollary corollary to that the the or the 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 B point B for that, not not point two, but you know point. Let's no, actually point um, point one. So, so the first one is, you are the only one that can decide what is true for you, and so the part two of this is that it is okay to not know what is true. It is okay to not know. For the time being, because sometimes when you're on the journey of finding out what is the truth for yourself, um, you really don't know what is the truth until you get to decide for yourself, until you get to the bottom, until you've looked through all of the information and really come to a conclusion for yourself that it is okay to not know. So don't don't make it that I have to know right now. Um, yeah, sometimes you don't. Some, and be comfortable with not knowing. So, and that's, that may be um, a little bit much to ask. However, in this kind of environment where everyone is trying to push their version of the truth on you, um, it's okay to not know for the time being. And also trust yourself, trust that you, there is, that um, there is a, there is some part of you that know, and that, that some part of you will guide you 
if you are really interested in finding out for yourself that the truth will be revealed to you. And when, when, you, when you see the truth, something that resonates with you, something that all of a sudden everything else makes sense, that, that moment will come. And until then, make it, let it be okay that you don't know what is the truth in this moment. Just um, keep looking and keep, um, keep asking for the truth to be revealed to you. So that's the first point. And the second one um, is no, I say second, not because it's less important, it's actually ex also as important. It's just that, you know, that's more than one that's important. So the second one is that it's really the reason why I, I named the title of this, this um, episode as the second, the second point is that you are all that is. You are the creator of your own reality. You are all that is. Each and every one of us, each and every one is extremely valuable, extremely precious. We matter. And I can, I can, sh I can prove it to you because um, millions and trillions of dollars have been spent on trying to convince you to adopt a certain narrative. For example, um, McDonald's spent millions multi-millions maybe tens of maybe or or even hundreds of millions to advertise to get people to to eat at their their restaurants or their their um, outlet so that's just one corporation for example netflix spent millions to produce movies to buy rights to movies and etc just so to attract you to go and support their continued existence um, as a corporation. So that's what I mean by millions and trillions of money have been spent on trying to convince you to adopt certain narratives. And, and so that's why each and every one of you is precious and valuable. And you don't really have to look very far to, to, re, to, to, to know that what I'm saying is true because um, everyone around you is really trying to persuade you to buy into their version of the reality. Some people or corporation um, want you to buy in for you know, good and, and wholesome reason and others may not be for um, very good or wholesome reason, but whether for good or for bad, they, um, these corporations and people want you to, to buy in to their idea. And why? Because an idea is just an idea in the air. An idea is not real. An idea does not matter until and unless you, you focus on it, unless you um, are willing to accept that idea, uh, to, to put your energy into that idea and, and the energy would maybe to give your time to it or maybe to give your money to, to it. Um, but, you know, an idea is just an idea in the air until you focus on it, either focus on it positively by buying in or negatively by resisting it. But whether you focus on it positively or negatively, there is still a focus. An idea is not real if you don't focus on it. If, it's, if you have no opinion one way or another, then that idea um, for all intents and purpose is not real for you. <clears throat> so that is why corporations, many 
um, many individuals, um, they try to spend millions and millions to, to convince you to buy in to their narrative. And that is why, and that actually is proof to you that you are valuable. Your opinion is valuable. Your focus, your energy is extremely valuable. And by inference, you are very variable because you are all that is. You are the one that creates your reality. And, the, and these um, corporations that want you to buy into their reality is that they want to convince you that this is something that you should put your energy in. The more people agree to put in their energy in, then the more that idea become real and, and get to the point of being entrenched in um, collective reality. So that's why your focus is so important because you are all that is. Each and every one of us has that ability because we each create our own reality. And, that's, and, and some of these ideas really, um, or people that be, that's behind these ideas really want to push these ideas, certain ideas, to, um, to be alive in your reality. And the more they can convince more people, then uh, the more real their idea becomes. So that's why you are all that is, because you are really the creator of your own reality. And then, so, that's the second point. And the third one is that you are not you. So what do I mean by that? Because that, that um, was really the, the, uh, the, the title of one of the past episodes this month. But I want to reiterate that again, because I really think that that's important to, to know that you are not you. I am not me, meaning the meaning is that who I think I am in this moment is actually the result of thousands of years of conditioning. So my, I don't know how many generations back, my, my um, grand, great, 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 great grandparents, or maybe even before that, uh, like these ideas, these ideas have, some of these ideas have been around for, you know, thousands of years and they have been um, pushed and sold to the, 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 the collective before, thousands of years before, and it's kind of filtered into our collective um, what, how, how do I share that in, into our collective consciousness that these things are real um, is like, you know, life is hard is, is one maybe, let's say life is hard. It's one of the, the ideas that's been par put on us and that, you know, um, we need money, we need to eat in order to survive. You know, a lot of these ideas that have been conditioned, pushed, Put and um, shared with us and with enough <clears throat> with enough uh, authority or perceived authority to try to convince us that these ideas are real and so so by the time it, it got to me I I didn't even a lot of ideas I have not questioned at all so who I am in this moment it has a lot to do with all these past conditioning and um, so I am not me, meaning that the real me, the, the me that, has, that is beyond conditioning is very different from the me that I have come to know after all these millennia 
of conditioning. So that's why the theme for this month has been unboxing, is because part of getting to know what is true or deciding what is true, what is my truth, part of it has to be is to unbox myself. I have a, uh, if I really want to find out what is true, then one of the, the, the things that I need to do is to challenge myself to go beyond my comfort zone, to, to go beyond and question why I believe certain things are true. Because some of the ideas that um, I used to believe in, for example, uh, from, from some of the, um, what I've shared with you is that our idea of who God is, is actually um, very far away from what I have been conditioned to believe. I have been conditioned that there is this God that, um, that judge us, that tell us what is right and what is wrong and what I should do. And if I don't do what I should do, then I'm a bad person and I would go to hell. I would suffer eternally. So all these ideas, it's, it's really um, when I, when I um, look more behind it, is that this idea of God is actually um, very, who God really is, is very different from what I have been conditioned to believe. So, and that is not, um, it's not a comforting, it's not a comforting discovery. Let's, let's let me put it this way, is that, um, something like that. For example, uh, um, I, one of the I, I've been following this um, this YouTube channel called the Cosmic Agency, and and um, I think it's a it's not really recently, um, maybe about a year or two ago. Some of the the the, the videos talked about who like who or oh, is there Jesus was Jesus real and who who was this Jesus so actually according to um, some version of the truth I'm not saying it's the truth I'm just saying that according to some version of the truth that there this idea of a Jesus is actually something that's been concocted to um, to kind of persuade the, the popular um, belief at the time. So all this thing about Christianity is, is really some sort of a crowd control. I'm not suggesting that it is real. I'm not suggesting that it is fake. I'm just saying that according to some people, their version of the truth is that there is no Jesus. There was no Jesus. And that this, this Jesus was um, actually based on um, a, it's really based on a few other um, people that has actually lived and walked the earth. Um, and based on their teachings and, and this, I think it's Roman, this Roman um, emperor decided to create this, this character called Jesus in order to persuade and crowd control. So I find that it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, premise. And I would need to, to really dig deeper in order to find out what is the truth for myself. And that the, the, the idea that religion, all religion um, actually stem from that is to really, all religion is, has been proposed in order to control the people. So 
I'm just going to throw it out there. If that's an idea that intrigues you, I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's false. But if that's an idea that intrigues you, then maybe you would like to spend more time to look into that idea. And if that does not interest you, then go do something else that interests you. But the idea I want to bring out is that you, who you think you are is not really who you are. And that you right now is the, is the result of thousands of years of conditioning. And that now we are here at the age of disclosure, the year of disclosure. I think it is really in terms of growing up as a consciousness if that is what you're interested in, to grow your consciousness, then one of the, the, the most important thing you need to do is to uncover who that you that is underneath all these conditioning really is. And that um, one of the ways that you can start to do that is really to challenge yourself to look at ideas that 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 has been so comfort comfortable with uh, that you have been so comfortable with and start to go beyond your comfort zone look at ideas that is completely uncomfortable and how do you want to do that? That really depends on how adventurous you are and how fast you want to um, grow. The more you are willing to sacrifice your sacred cow to, to um, break out of your own comfort zone, to unbox yourself, the, um, the faster or the, 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 the more it is that, the more ground you can cover in terms of growing your own consciousness. And that is just what I have found for myself. And I know not everyone is cut out to, um, to get out of their own comfort zone. And if, you're not comfortable with that, then that's okay. Just, I'm just saying that if you want to grow your own consciousness, then you need to challenge yourself to unbox yourself, get out of that box, get out of your comfort zone, go do things that at first seems to be uncomfortable for you. Listen to people who are talking about ideas that is unfamiliar and maybe uncomfortable for you. I'm not saying to just, you know, go do that and nothing else. I'm just saying that for to, is to really start to expose yourself to different ideas because your consciousness can only grow as far as you are willing to look at new ideas and decide for yourself whether it is for you or not. And, and you really have, have to be the one to make an informed decision and not to just, you know, um, reject any new ideas just on the basis that they are new and you're not comfortable that that really is what I'm suggesting. So um, for myself, I've been like, what's been interesting me? Well, I am interested in, for example, Cosmic Agency is, is actually about um, this conversation that this, this um, young woman, I think she lives in Spain from that is, in Spain right now, and she is actually um, has been contacted by a group of Pleiadians that call themselves the Targetans. 
So, so, and I'm interested in that conversation. I don't agree with all of it. Some of it I find very thought provoking. And um, so that's why I, I, you know, spend my time on those videos. Not, not that, you know, I take every word that they, that um, that's, being said in there as being, you know, the truth. There are some things that I'm ready to um, explore. And then there are some things that does not quite sound right to me yet. So, and some of the other things that I'm interested in is, uh, for example, recently, I, I actually came across, um, uh, well, you have all heard about William Shakespeare, right? So actually, William Shakespeare is a um, is a kind of like a contemporary to someone by the name of John D. And John D. is a very um, like smart person for his time. Really, one of the the smartest person um, around his neighborhood, and very well read and respected kind of respected, um, mostly respected by, by the um, people in the, in, in the UK at the time. And what really intrigued me was that um, John D actually, because he's such a smart person that he, I'm, I'm not sure how old he was when he started doing this, maybe 40s or 50s but like old older but not like senile yet still very um very much uh, feel, fairly much um ape capable by the time he he got to the point where he for whatever reason believed that he has learned all the uh, all the things that he could have learned um at the time and so he seeked more knowledge and and he think that well I've learned all that I can learn from human beings so why not start to talk to uh, superhuman beings or, or super beings so he actually had the idea to start to talk to angels and um, lo and behold when he had that idea angels come knocking on <laughs> his store and so that actually uh started a whole different um a whole different scenario where he he actually i think it's over 20 years he and another person i forgot that person's name now um uh, i think it's john edward kelly so john d and edward kelly they they were doing all these um angel like like it's like zoom or in in um nowadays term is like they're having these zoom calls with angels and um and they actually downloaded through all their 20 years of sessions downloaded a set of angelic um language it's called the ophinin or ophinic or language so it's the ang it's the the language of angels and um so all this intrigued me because you know i channel so i would like to learn um angel language too so so that's so yes i am i'm i'm weird i i have these um really far out Mm, interests and not not everyone has to be you know that far out as me like if like only just just if you're interested just whatever it is that you're interested look at or in whatever direction or, or whatever um category that that holds your interest for example if you're interested in healing then you know definitely do something cool like um, learning from Sifu James or look at um, different 
ways of healing. And um, so whatever it is that interests you, whatever direction that is interesting, uh, that really in your interest lies in, go towards that direction, but look for ideas that will stretch you and challenge your current beliefs so that so much so that you when you follow those breadcrumbs that invariably you will have to transform your own consciousness in order to incorporate these new ideas because every, the the only way we can guarantee that we don't grow is to never learn anything new so the more you learn the more you your concept of who you are and your concept of what reality is has to transform with you and that's the idea of growing your own consciousness so that's point number three so point number four is that um yes while you are challenging yourself and and doing all these things um, my, my experience has been the more you look behind the curtain, the more you will be confronted by how, how ignorant and limited your current or past beliefs had been. And it is actually the, the I think the most prevalent emotions that come to mind is that you feel angry because if you because there's been so much that's been um, kind of hidden from us that when you start to look behind closed doors when you start knocking on closed doors and you find that but well, they have never been locked it's just that you um, there's been a lot of misdirection to make sure that you you don't even um, go and try to open the doors that no matter whether the doors that you are knocking on um, are locked or not as long as you want certain to go in a certain direction you will find a way to open locked doors you will find a way to find the truth or whatever it is that is preventing you from recognizing the truth so one of the the, the emotions or the the easiest emotions to come up with is anger and fear all those things it's going to come these emotions is what will stop you um, from going further so you need to find out, you need to figure out a way for you to process your own emotions, process your own stuff. And I have, like we've talked about how to process is simply to observe, observe your own emotions. If you feel angry, then um, don't judge, don't judge the anger. The anger is simply a, a feedback mechanism it's it's a way that your um yourself your true self is trying to tell you that some some ideas that you are or some situation um is like that your boundaries are being crossed are being um violated that's why you feel angry so don't uh, judge the emotions it's okay to be angry it's nothing wrong with being angry there's nothing wrong with feeling the fear nothing wrong with that they are feedback mechanism is just telling you oh slow down process it first just observe the anger and let it let it resolve itself anger once the once you process the anger once you've just observed and allow that anger to come up and then start to come back down again then you can look at what which boundary which of your boundary which of your beliefs 
have been violated and and is it is it something that you want to do do you want to to stop that violation or do you want to actually look at that belief and see it for what it is it's a belief and it can be changed and are you ready to change it and if you're ready to change it then just throw it out the door so emotions come up and they are they are good they they, they give you a feedback me mechanism whether it is um, emotions like anger fear shame guilt all of those things catch them don't let any of these emotions um, keep to stay with you because as as much as emotions are good stuck emotions are not they are told they totally will mess you up they will mess up your body they'll mess up your thinking they will mess up your um your journey of, of growing your consciousness so no judgment to any emotions when you when emotions come up process them and look behind the emotions and see what is there and clean up to find out is a belief has been violated so is that something is that belief something that you want to hold on to or not and have make an informed choice so that's so that is really my next point is to process your own stuff step over nothing because each your each of your emotions they are they are valid and when you when you look behind the emotions then you actually that's how you transform <clears throat> your own your own consciousness is by transforming these emotions transforming the beliefs that needed to be transformed and that's how you grow and last but not least is to choose your preferred reality now i know um we we've been or at least i have been trained to um, accept really reality as it is don't try to to change reality it's, it's like the ground is or the earth is hard so don't try to to change that because that's reality um but now the more that i start to grow my own consciousness i have a different take on it is that we can actually choose our preferred reality the ground is hard only if you believe it because beyond a certain belief um nothing is solid our body is really not solid our cells is not solid most of it is just space so but when we don't question what we believe in then um we take it for like reality is what it is we can't change but um what i know now after looking behind some closed doors is that not only is um, reality not not real is that we can actually choose our preferred reality and when you the more you start to question and start to grow your own consciousness and start to um really embrace the the idea that there is no truth beyond you and that you are all that is when you follow all of that and start to look at what you think of as being real you start to be um understand what i mean that you can actually choose your own preferred reality 
And the more you are congruent with the reality that, that really resonate with you, the more you would be able to step inside that your preferred reality. You can choose your own emotions. For example, um, no matter what is happening, you can actually choose to be happy. You may be suffering. You may be, you may, uh, you know, maybe lots of uh, horrible things may be happening around you and outside of you. However, you can still choose to be happy because there is no such thing as that you have to have a certain, yeah, reality has to look a certain way in order for you to be happy. That is totally a, and um, yeah, I don't believe that at all. I, it's actually the, um, the, the, the opposite that I believe is that when you choose to be happy and you really get to the point where you, no matter what's happening, you choose and you feel that happiness, you feel that joy, you feel that gratitude, then the reality outside of you will start to reconfigure itself to match what you feel inside. So choose your preferred reality, whatever that may be. So these are really the, the few things that I, I want to share with all of you is, is that um, if you really um, start to look into some of these suggestions, these one, two, how many, how many did I say? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five things that I've shared five things that I've shared. Um, one is that, you know, um, there's, there's no truth outside of you. You are all that is. You are not you. Process your own emotions, your own stuff, and choose your preferred reality. These five things, if you really um, look at them and consider them and start to implement them and start and that these five things will help you to sift through all the, 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 the information that's coming at you. It will give you a, um, a grounding for you to, to choose for yourself what it is that you want to, to focus on and allow it in your reality. So, and I would like to share these five things with you before it gets um, even crazier. <laughs> so, so that's all I have to offer this evening. And thank you very much for allowing me to uh, to have my say and now uh, it's uh, over to you guys.